Mistral AI recently released the third version of their 7B model, which is fine-tuned for function calling. In this video, we're going to try it out on a few different scenarios and see how well it actually works. We're going to be using it via Alama, so make sure you've got that running. And then we're going to have a look at my function calling file. So you can see we've got a function called generate output. It takes in a question and some function definitions. We're then using one of the Mistral 7B models. Version three is what you need. And then we've got our prompt and that needs to take in available tools and then the function definitions and then close the available tools and then pass in the instruction or the question that you're going to ask. And then we can call Alama generate, pass in the model, the prompt to make sure that you've got raw set to true. So it's time for our first function call. So in this one, we're going to have the LLM extract the time zone for a given place. Okay, so let's create our test time file and we're going to import some modules. And then we're going to define our first test. So it's going to be test underscore time. It's going to take in some state. That's going to be used to collect the results, which we'll use later. And the number of iterations, i.e. how many times do we want to call the LLM? Then we'll do our function definition. So it's going to be get time. We're going to say it's going to get the current time in a time zone inferred from the place. The LLM is going to work out the time zone for the place. And then the parameter is going to be the time zone itself. And then we're going to define our question. So what is the time in San Francisco? The expected result is going to be the get time function with the time zone of America forward slash Los Angeles. Then we're going to create the test results summary. That's going to be using that. That's going to be stored in that state object that we talked about at the top. And so this is going to allow us to keep track of how good the output was as well as the output itself. Then we're going to iterate over a number of times. We're going to call that generate output function. And then we're going to check the results with the check function call function. So let's have a look what that looks like. So you can see it takes in an output and an expected result. The first thing we check is does it have tool calls? We then split the output because the tool calls is always on the first line. And then we check is there any other outputs or are there any other lines? Coming down, we then do a regex to check on that tool calls line. Does it have the, the, the actual function call in there? We then do the regex check. If it matches, we'll pull out the group. Otherwise, we'll say it's none. Then we check, do you actually have a function called JSON? We'll try and load it to see if it's valid. If it's valid, it's true. And then we, if it is also valid, we'll check, do we have exactly what we said we're expecting to see in the test? Otherwise, we're going to say, if it failed to decode it, the signature is not valid and there's no exact match. And if we didn't get it at all, again, those two are both false. And then if we come down to the bottom, we then collect the results into this dictionary. Let's come back to the test file and call the collect results function. So this function, as well as collecting that, that data that we just saw there, it also collects the LLM output so that we can have a look ourselves and see what was returned. Let's now come over and we'll use PyTest to run the test. If we now have a look at the output from running that test, it goes into a, a file in the test output directory. We can see the total runs was one. The function call was present. The signature was not valid. There was no extra output and it wasn't an exact match. And the reason is because we've got a double backslash in the time zone. Let's now try and run it 20 times to see what happens. And you can see if we look over to the Alama tab, it's taking about just a bit over a second each time and it takes 30 seconds in total. And it's run 20 times. The function call was present every time. Signature valid 17 times. No extra output 17 times and the signature exact match 17 times. So the first five are perfect. Let's scroll down a little bit so we can see uh, some double backslashes like we saw before. And then there are, are a few where it's returned the function signature followed by a bunch of text. Now the extra text is on a new line, so it's pretty easy to ignore in our app. So we'll forgive it for that. Let's try another function. So we'll copy the imports and paste them into our next test file. This function is the classic weather example used by OpenAI. So again, the function test weather takes in the state, takes in the iterations, we'll define our function. It's get current weather, we'll tell it, I want you to get the current weather in a given latitude and longitude. The parameters are going to be a latitude, which is a number, and it's the latitude of a place, and a longitude, which is the number, and that's the longitude of a place. So that's what this is testing in particular, is the number type. And then we're going to do our questions. What's the weather like today in New York? We've got our expected result, and then we're going to collect the results. Let's come over and get PyTest to run that one. Again, we'll look at Alama. You can see this is taking a little bit longer, four or five seconds. We'll speed things up, and it takes just over two minutes to run everything. Let's have a look at the results again. So you see they're in a slightly different file. This one ran 20 times. The signature was only valid six times. No extra output, only three times. And exact match, only six times. So if we look at the output, you can see the first three all have extra text, which is, that's not too bad. But what is problematic is just after the tool calls, if you look at the actual function itself, on a lot of them, the, the closing square bracket is not there. Instead, it's got a closing curly bracket. And if we can scroll down, we can see that happening on lots of the other examples at all. So that wouldn't actually be parsable. So that is problematic. And for our third and final function, we're going to compute the sentiment of some book reviews and return the results as an array of objects. So this one is, ver this one is very difficult uh, out of the three. This is what the reviews look like. And then we're going to create ourselves a test sentiment file. 
we'll import pandas and then we're going to define the tests again state and iterations we're going to have the function that we're going to pass it is going to be called extract sentiment we'll say get the sentiment for a given review so we're asking the llm to do that and then the output parameter or the parameters that we're expecting for this function are reviews which is an array and inside there there will be objects which have a sentiment and a sentiment score let's read the csv file with pandas and then we're going to pass it into our question. So at the top of our question, we're going to have the reviews. We're going to say, analyze the sentiment of the reviews above. And then we've got our expected result. I'm not expecting it to get this, this, this at all. This is just my guess of what I think the sentiment is. So I'd be very, very surprised if it, if it got this correct. And then we'll get the, collect the results and sort of run, run everything. And we'll come over, pie test again, 20 iterations again. And this time you can see from the Alama tab, it's taking a really long time, like it's sometimes six, seven seconds. Uh, and if we come over, let's speed that up. It's taken just over two minutes to run everything. So if we have a look at the results, you can see it ran 20 times. Function call was present only five times. So that means it's got that special little syntax at the beginning, which is kind of what tells us that a function call happened. So if we don't have that, we don't, we don't really know that it, that it was there. Signature wasn't valid ever. Signature didn't match, exact match ever, which is kind of what we expected. And there was no extra output. 14 times. If we have a look at the output itself, you can see the first one, it's missing that tool calls syntax at the beginning and the second one as well and the third one. If we come down, we can see there are some that do have it uh, and it does look like the it's actually kind of done a bit of what we asked it to do. It's just missing that tool calls everywhere, which is kind of, kind of strange. So I'd say for strings, it worked pretty much out of the box. I'd say it was pretty good for that. But for the other types, there's still a bit of work to do. It's not really working on those ones. So if you'd like to see an end-to-end -end example showing how to use the results of these function calls, check out this video up here.